Hey everybody, welcome back to Review the Nerds. I'm Vincent. And I'm Mike, and today we're going to be reviewing Logan, the third solo Wolverine film, and closing off 18 years worth of uh, his adventures. Yeah, this is the final film for Wolverine and Hugh Jackman playing Wolverine, so a lot of emotion here. But the basic uh, story is that Wolverine, he's in his older years, he's got the gray hair, his healing factor isn't working that well anymore, he's got scars all over his body, and not only does he have to deal with his own problems, he's got to take care of an ailing Professor X who's suffering from some kind of mental disorder. And then all of a sudden, boom, this young girl is thrown into his life who has basically the same abilities as him, and she's being chased by some kind of government mercenaries. And he's got to find a way to take care of both of them, while at the same time finding that sense of justice that kind of pushes Wolverine through. That's Logan. This is 18 years in the making, so much built up to this moment. Yeah. And so a lot of expectations. So overall, I really liked the movie. Uh, it had great performances and really well-developed characters. The action was the most brutal and gritty from the series by far. It's also the most dramatic and emotional, and there are big consequences in this. So there's a lot to praise. All that said, though, I do feel that it's a good movie that falls just short, just a little bit, of being a great one. After a strong first half, it does drag a bit in the middle, and it also does reuse some story elements from the previous films. However, the execution is definitely fresh and risky. So for me, this was the best Solo Wolverine movie, and I do recommend it for sure. I overall enjoyed the movie. I thought it was good. But um, as I said to Mike when we were talking about it after we, after we saw the movie, I feel like the movie gives me what I want but it doesn't give me that and more factor, you know? Like, I like a lot, I like pretty much everything going on with the characters and their development. I like the, uh, finally, a Wolverine movie which that was using violence. They took full advantage of that rated R. Yeah, it was definitely hardcore, you know, thanks to Deadpool for pushing the rated R superhero film. Everything works out nicely, but it doesn't give me that extra, that plus. That's what I was kind of waiting for. I never really got that. Once again, it doesn't kill the movie for me. I still enjoyed it. I'm glad I saw it but I wanted that and more factor. And this is going to be now spoiler territory. It's almost devoid of any joy whatsoever, minus an opening sequence I don't want to destroy. There's a, there's a little short at the opening of this that's very, yeah. very funny. Disney's not the only one doing little shorts promoting their other movies anymore. <laughs> we have uh, James Mangold, the director of uh, The Wolverine Returning. Um, he has also done Western, a Western before. He did 310 to Yuma. It has some of the sensibilities of like a old-school spaghetti Western. This has the spirit of an independent film set in a comic book universe. And the movie deserves a lot of credit for breaking from conventions, like, you know, what you're expecting from a superhero movie. And there's been other superhero films that have done this before, like The Dark Knight, but this brings it to a whole new level, just in terms of the... how dark it goes. The best stories, whether they're dealing with drama, superheroes, or really any genre, is to sprinkle in relatable issues that we all can recognize, to explore the human condition. And here you've got a broken man dealing with old age and the inevitability of death. And he's taking care of a dying father figure with Professor X. This relationship is very comparable to a son taking care of a father dealing with dementia or Alzheimer's. He's being poisoned uh, by his animantium. Yeah, which, which is which is pulled. From, I, I no, I'm not an expert on the X Men comics. I do know that's something from the comics they explored. That it turned out the adamantium is toxic, and it just it finally cut up, and his healing factor couldn't handle it much longer. Yeah, which does settle some uh, complaints people had with uh, the Days of Future Past. Everyone's like, why the hell is he getting gray hair already and stuff like that? Well, this answers that that he has been slowly being poisoned by the adamantium and has been slowly decreasing his ability to regenerate and heal and keep his youthful image. Yeah. But for the first time truly staring at the end of his life, existential and kind of terrifying, like in most heroes' journeys, you know, when a character feels like they have nothing left really to live for, then suddenly he has this little girl coming into his life representing a daughter. You know, you also have a sense of legacy here, you know, like what, what legacy is he leaving behind? X-23, you know, little girl was great. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. That's one of the things like, you're always worried about in a movie when they get like a child actor. Because, you know, like, I, I get it. They're kids. They may not have that much experience in acting. But you often get, like, you know, episode one young Anakin. You know what I'm talking about? It's always a, a fear that this could be, that uh, unintentionally, this kid could kind of hurt the movie. But the actress, who I believe her name is Daphne, uh, Daphne Keene, 
I believe her name is. She did a really good job, and she doesn't really talk throughout most of the movie. They do that kind of, like, kid who's traumatized and doesn't talk thing. Which is a little cliche, because there, there is a certain point where she does talk, and he's like, you talk? Yeah, and, and she like, can speak Spanish. I did like the point, though, where she just started talking, like, yeah. nonstop. He's like, shut the fuck up! Yeah. You know? <laughs> that was yeah. great. No, but she does uh, a good job. She actually, her, when she, in the scenes where she's fighting, you know, she busts out her claws and what's in her feet, and the rage in her, like, you, she's not just a little kid screaming, yeah. trying to act crazy. She's, like, really portraying that rage and, you know, the viciousness in a fight. And you're like, okay, yeah, that that would be Wolverine's daughter. Yeah. yeah. Was she was almost more vicious than him. I was yeah. like, holy shit. I hope to see her in other films, see what else she's got. You know? Yeah, don't think Anakin from Star Wars. Think Eleven from Stranger Things. Yeah. It's much, it's much closer to that quality. Um, yeah. She's great, and her chemistry with Hugh Jackman was great. Yeah. And speaking of acting, the acting in this in general is fantastic. Yeah, I... Don't think anyone did a bad job. I would say this is probably the best acting in the whole series. Uh, Hugh Jackman is delivering, I think, his greatest performance. I mean, you just really get that sense of, I think he's just given up. Yeah. You know, completely. He's just ready to die. You know, Stephen Merchant was also, uh, you know, a cool character that was in the beginning. He's this guy who's like, can track other mutants and he's somehow oh, hurts him. Caliban. Yeah, he was cool. Also, Patrick Stewart, man, just... Oh. Oh, solid, solid, so good, yeah. so and also so incredibly heartbreaking. Once you've known the character all these years and seeing the wisdom and the strength he had, you know, in the early movies, and now just seeing this man breaking down and losing everything. Yeah, I mean, he's still got that. Uh, he's still empathetic. He's still kind, especially towards X twenty three, aka Laura. But we also get to see a different side of Professor X we've never seen before. Like he's gotten to the point where like he's with Logan all the time. He doesn't have the rest of the team to like talk and interact with. So he has no break from Logan. So there's a few times where he kind of gets fed up with Logan, and he and he tells it like it is, and he, you see Professor X cuss. And we've never seen him cuss before, and it's funny, and he's kind of funny doing it. There's this one point in the movie where, like, Logan's like, take your pills, and he, like, takes the pills, and he takes a swig of water, and he's like, show, and, like, Logan's like, show me you took it, and he's like, ah! And it's kind of, <laughs> it's just funny to see him go from, like, the gentle, kind person that we know him from to being this, like, like Logan, cut the shit! If I just do it already, like, you no, know. I did kind of feel like every time he cursed, an angel somewhere died. Xavier cursing feels so wrong, no, but, I'm like... I'm just picturing the X-Men angel just, like, dropping out of the sky. Which, <laughs> honestly, might have happened, because you find out in this movie that there was an incident uh, back at the uh, Mutant Academy that they don't totally ever get specific about, but it was some kind of disaster where... Certainly, some X Men, it sounds like, died, if not all of them, but they yeah. never totally explain. Yeah, because, that. like, the seizures that Professor X have sends out some kind of psychokinetic wave that paralyzes. And if he doesn't pull out of it in time, you could die. So, yeah, there's indication that Professor X may have killed part or a great or the entire team, which is a switch up from how it was in the Old Man Logan comic, because in the Old Man Logan comic, doesn't Wolverine accidentally kill the team? Is that how it goes in the comics? Yeah, that's, that's an old man Logan storyline. Yeah. But uh, I do have to say that in the cinematic universe, this is a little unsatisfying as we just got a lot of them resurrected in Days of Future Past. Yeah. And this is only like six, seven years later. Yeah. It's like, why bother? Yeah. I mean, we and Mike were talking about it. Like, when we saw Days of Future Past at the end of the movie, we we're like, oh my god, everyone's still fine. <gasps> Gene's back. Oh my god. It's <gasps> Cyclops is back. Oh my god, they're both back. James Martin's finally getting some respect. Okay, damn. And then, like, oh no, they're gone now. Yeah, it feels like it goes past the point of just being sad to being almost more annoying. Even implying that all the X-Men are dead really damages the ending of Days of Future Past for me to a degree. It makes the struggles and victories in that movie, and actually all the movies to a degree, feel pointless and empty. But they do leave it ambiguous a little yeah. bit, and the reason for that, I'm assuming, is for business reasons that they want to leave it open just in case they want to include yeah. one of the X-Men in a future uh, X-23 film or something. Incredible sadness that's going on in this movie. I mean, like, these characters are just broken and stripped away from everything that they ever cared about. I do feel like the movie buckles slightly under the weight of all the continuity errors throughout the series. Wait, what universe are we in right now? Because Xavier makes a, a reference to the um, incident at the Statue of Liberty which is the original timeline. So I'm like, wait, I feel like Deadpool. These timelines are so confusing. Um, I, this, this, this series has unfortunately been plagued with some of the worst continuity writing I've ever seen. That's an issue that's going to plague every X-Men movie net from here on forward unless they reboot the entire thing. The action is also pretty, um, pretty good. It's much smaller scale than your typical X-Men movie. It's all just mostly fist fights. A lot of head stabbing. A lot oh, of heads. There's this one graphic. Scene. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> I think there's one scene where he just straight like he doesn't need to stab them in the head. He just needs to take them out. But he just stabs every dude in the head. Just, Ugh. 
Ugh. Yeah, Xavier has, <clears throat> Xavier has all these guys frozen. Fuck the double tap, just one, one, one and done. Each one of the claw strikes looked real, the blood looked realistic. Whether it was a stab or a, uh, or a slash, whatever was going on, it was all solid. You go from this like really like rapid fire, like claw strike, claw strike stuff, and then in the car chase, and you know, there's guns going off, it was nice. Yeah, I mean, so the action is, is much more small scale, and so is the visual effects. I mean, I don't think, it's not flashy visual effects, they're very no. simple. Also, the major, like, flashy special effects don't happen t till like, towards the last, I'd say, the last half hour of the film. The villains are pretty forgettable in this, which is strange because the storyline offers an opportunity to have Mr. Sinister be a villain, and I think that would have been a good way to go, but the movie decides to instead focus on this mechanical armed mutant bounty hunter and this scientist, you know, guy. I, I really think they could have done better. Another um, twist in this movie is that while they've experimented on having an offspring of Wolverine, they've also experimented by cloning Wolverine. Yeah. So he has an evil younger clone that has been de-aged to look just like, I would say, Hugh Jackman looked in the first movie. Um, yeah, and, at the X-24. Yeah, and he is a Wolverine with absolutely no moral code whatsoever, so he's much more dangerous. Yeah, he just, he just does what he's told for the most part, and he kills. That's pretty much all he does. He represents, you know, the darkest parts of Logan. That's what he's in the movie to be, not just to be like a, you know, um, a villain. I think they could have been done a little better with that, with that, how reflective that is. Yeah. I think they didn't, like, really develop that up. Because he, he pops up in the last half hour of the film. Yeah, I think X-24 should have had a few layers added into him. He wasn't really a character. He was just kind of a gun. I have viewed it as when they constructed his brain, they kept it very simple. Like, he doesn't have high-level intelligence. This is what Wolverine could have been if he was born in different circumstances, okay? Because this guy was given no code. I mean, um, so I think it would have been cool to maybe see him raised like a, a, you know, like a fighting dog or something like that. Like, kept in a cage, you know, maybe, uh, you know, starved, you know, tormented, you know, hurt and heal over and over again. Just something that, to feel that rage. I think I would like to see him a little more there. It's him battling his youth, his rage, his yeah. berserkerness, yeah. you know, the animal side. Yeah. You know, you want to see Wolverine overcome the animal side. After the first 40 minutes, the story branches off into detour segments, and it really slows down in the middle of the film, especially when they end up on the farm. You know, like, why the hell would they stay with an innocent family when they know they're being chased by killers? I know. Logan I... himself mentions it's dangerous. <laughs> like, what kind of heroes would risk innocent lives just for dinner? It is weird. I, I agree. Like, when that happened, I was like, and like, Professor Rice is like, no, we should, we should stay. This is family. Like, I get the point of it. It's like for Logan to be like, have that sense of what it's like to be family and Professor X to feel normal again. But when it happens, when they decide to stay, like, you know what's going to go down. You know what's going to go down. And like... You know they're dead the second thing you see. Exactly. Them. Like, or at least a few of the family members, but the whole family gets killed. Like, yeah. the movie isn't depressing enough and isn't making you go, oh. Like, no, they take on this whole family. And I look like, afterwards, I'm just like, who's going to take care of the horses? <laughs> and it's completely their fault. Yeah. Doesn't this seem familiar, Wolverine? Didn't you do the exact same stupid fucking thing in X-Men Origins Wolverine? Did you learn nothing? Again, he went on a farm with a freaking, um, what, with those two old couple, yeah. and he got them killed. <laughs> now, of course, in this continuity, maybe that didn't happen, sure. but we've seen it before in this series. You know? Logan needs to stay away from farms. And what is it lately with superhero movies detouring from the main plot to waste time on a farm? Hello, um, Age of Ultron, Avengers? My biggest criticism in, is that the movie made some of the same mistakes from the previous films. Okay. For a film that's being praised for how original it is, it really reuses a lot of plot elements. This movie once again starts off with the Wolverine being lost and broken, isolating himself from the rest of the world, and again his, his past catches up to him, and someone asks him for help. Someone who's asking him to be the Wolverine one last time. Mm. It involves him protecting someone again, and two of them going on the run from the bad guys again. The bad guys are once again involved in mutant experiments, Again, once again, Wolverine fights another Andamantium-wielding henchman. Once again, Wolverine is weakened by some kind of poison that disrupts his healing abilities. <laughs> there is a lot of repackaging of already used plot elements in this. I think that is a problem. I mean, I, it's not like I don't notice it. I mean, he's trying to find his purpose again. It's original in its presentation. Yeah. Like, I can't think of another superhero movie that's as grim and dark as this, okay? Definitely yeah. in its presentation, but in its plot and narrative, oh, very similar to other stuff. Yeah. I think maybe they're trying to get away with that because, like, as we've said, very character-driven movie. And when you got good enough characters, the story can... Like, I've always... Uh, like, characters and story are, you know, top two important things in making a movie. I personally think characters are a little bit more important. Like, if you got good enough characters, the story can kind of be... 
can not be weak, but not be as like sure. in Deadpool. This the story in Deadpool is nothing that hasn't been done before. Boy meets girl, girl changes boy, girl is kidnapped boy, has to save girl to become a hero. That was the, the plot of Deadpool. It's been done a thousand times before, but because the characters in Deadpool were so much were so much fun, they were hilarious, and uh, you know Ryan Reynolds being awesome in Deadpool and the way the other characters played off of him, it was okay that this story was nothing so special. I think that's what they were going for in this film by making it so character driven. In a way, they pulled it off because as we said. We loved all the characters. We loved all the performances. We loved the way the way they interacted with each other. All that stuff. And I, and I think they were and they didn't realize like no, we really need both to be great for this final Wolverine send off. Yeah. And once again, it doesn't kill the film, but it is noticeable that they are just trying to make a more improved version of the Wolverine in Logan. I guess Patrick Stewart. R.I.P. Xavier. <laughs> we lost him once already, and now we have to lose him again. But uh... You know, uh, he's he's at the end of his uh, life, though I guess. Yeah, his scene was like a bittersweet death because he's he, he's seen, you know he's talking. And he's like, oh, this is like the most perfect day I've had in such a long time. And he's like, but I didn't deserve it because I remember what I did. It's like, oh, he's he's happy. He's, you know, but and then oh, he's remembering the incident at the academy. Yeah. The sad thing about it is that you expect Xavier to go out in some you know really flashy way, kind of like he did in X Men Three, like some yeah. kind of big moment. Instead, it was this very, very small, yeah. intimate moment. He didn't go out fighting or anything. He went out, you know, in a very weakened moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was kind of, you know, I, during that part, I thought right before he died, because now we see, okay, X-24 is out there, I thought, is Professor X going to transplant Logan's mind into X-24 so he can have a young body again before he dies? And then, no, that doesn't happen. But uh, so I, thought, I thought for half a second they were going to do that. Oh, you know, we're going to see more Wolverine. He's got a young body again, but no. They had X-23 and all the other, like, kids uh, that they were, kid mutants that they made and they were going to make them assassins. And it wasn't working out. They are like, well, let's just go back to the old ways. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just make, we'll just make a new Logan. And it'll be better than the old one. And like, I just find it funny. They're like, well, yeah. we, spent, we spent 10 years developing this program, but it didn't work out. Let's just go back to what used to work. The Weapon X is back, baby. <laughs> Almost as funny as a nurse taking a video footage with her cell phone and then somehow after the escape using Final Cut Pro or something to edit narration over the whole thing. She's probably like, autopilot engage. I got to edit this. <laughs> Wait, hold it. It's rendering. The cell phone thing was very, very spoon-fed exposition. It was like, okay, let's catch you up to speed and everything that's going on. Yeah, I think it would have been better if they just had the kid tell the story. Like, like she doesn't want to open up, and then she starts crying, and she's talking about, talk about all the kids. Give him a reason to be sympathetic towards, you know, the kid. But it could have been done a little bit better. It's not horrible, it's just, eh. At the end of the movie, uh, Logan and X-23 team up with a whole bunch of other kids that have escaped from this facility, and each one of them has some kind of unique ability. Some of them were pretty cool and yeah. brutal, some of them. Yeah, some of them, like, one girl could control, uh, like, plants and wood and stuff, and she, like, sent wood shards into this dude, like, laid yeah. off like a porcupine. Uh, <laughs> One girl could like had freeze press. Another kid he could electrify stuff. One kid had telekinesis, and you could and he I think he lifted up an armored truck at one point and, and dropped it down on yeah. Logan's clone. Yeah, the end is not a big epic superhero fight like we expect from a lot of movies, but at the same time I like that I like Wolverine just being him saving people. And it's somewhat simple. I mean, there's still mutants, there's still powers and stuff, but it's not like this big epic thing. I kind of like how that you know the ending he he ends off just try and save people. This is the end of Logan's journey and a lot of us have, you know, talked about what that end could be. Is it going to be like a symbolic, like spiritual end to the character or is it going to be actually the end of his life? Um, you know, and uh, they decided to take the risky um, move and make it the end of his life. Yeah. We unfortunately lose Wolverine at the end of this movie. He dies. Yeah, um, I mean, he dies going out how you want to see Wolverine, saving people. He doesn't die going out fighting like Galactus or something. You know, he just he just he's just a man who had a has had a rough life and he's not always the best to be around, but he does generally care about people and, and wants, you know, to help them and save them. And when you know he dies, he's got X twenty three next to him, she's crying, he's like telling her like, hey, you don't have to be a weapon like the image. He's giving her that last fatherly advice. He's like it's almost sound like he's gonna be like, earn this. <laughs> Same Private Ryan. But like, uh, I mean, you know, he's basically, you know, just saying, don't be what they made you. I think it's exactly yeah. how he phrased it. Yeah, because I did, you know, like, and he knows that because they tried to make him into a weapon. Um, and, you know, Daphne Keene, who plays X-23, she was like, she was crying it up. And, you know, she was doing pretty well in that scene. She very, she, she was strong little actress. His final words, you know, like, oh, so this is what it feels like. Because he's never really experienced death. 
he's always been able to come back. Or if he or, or if he has, it's like you know, like oh, he's gonna. Like, the closest was was in the Wolverine because he kind of dies for like a couple minutes. Well, you know, but he knows, but he got it out just in time, so he kind of knew that he was coming back. I also, I also liked how, like, at towards the end of the movie, the kids they like take the scissors and give him a little shave. Then yeah. he's back to his Wolverine chops. You know, he's dying as Wolverine. You know, he's dying as who he really is. And he doesn't go out on an epic fight against some super mutant. It's like a a a, a almost small scale fight for mutants in a way. He does. It's not this big grand thing. It's like just one on one fight. You know, just doing what you can against an opposing force that outnumbers you but doesn't necessarily outpower you. Yeah, it's rough. It's kind of brutal. It, it did hit me emotionally, obviously. I, I love the character. We all, I think, love the character. That's why he's yeah. been around for so long. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, we both grew up on the 90s X-Men series. Yeah. Wolverine was already a popular character in the comic, but, like, I think it was, I, I've heard in the 80s, that's when he, like, really started to pick up. And then by the time the cartoon came around, he's already popular, and then it really boosted him. And ever since Hugh Jackman took the role, he's just... He's it. been Wolverine, yeah. I mean, I, the only complaint I've ever heard about him as Wolverine was when it was announced that he was oh, cast. Yeah. That, like, whoa, Hugh Jackman, who's this guy? I've never really heard of him, man. Oh, he's... Like, he's too tall. He's too tall. He's Wolverine. too Australian. Yeah, he's Australian. Like, but after people saw him and they were like, no, okay, yeah, that's Wolverine. That, that's, that's who he is. He did a great job. And both Patrick Stewart and Hugh Jackman have announced that they are done yeah. with the, their parts in the X-Men universe, uh, which is sad. I mean, uh, Patrick Stewart said he wasn't going to stop until he couldn't do it anymore, but he said after he saw this movie at the premiere, he was like, I can't think of a better way to leave this character off. I think this movie is a uh, celebration of Hugh Jackman. Uh, it's hard to imagine him never playing the character again. It's, 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 yeah. it's difficult. Um, he has know, said in an interview he wants to see somebody else play Wolverine now. He wants it to, like... Somebody take up the mantle. So looking forward to Wolverine's legacy, there could definitely be more movies with X-23. I wasn't sure about the character when she was first announced, but this movie sold me on her. I'm totally down for that. Because the movie left the state of the X-Men somewhat ambiguous, it does also present some uh, possibilities for them to pop back up. I think it's reasonable to assume that there could be survivors from the incident that happened at the X-Mansion. It makes sense to me that Xavier would want to isolate himself um, from the rest of the X-Men for their own protection. Logan seems to be somewhat able to withstand his episodes, which could explain why he was chosen to be his caretaker. There's a part of me that can't believe that either A, they would like accept that and stay away from him even if he asked them to, or B, that they wouldn't try to be finding him and Logan and be like, guys, we're family, let's work this out. Jean, like we've mentioned, has a lot of powers herself. She might yeah. be helping to protect and shield him from the others finding him. Who knows? We have no idea what's going on. We don't, yeah. And that I mean, technically, bother. technically... There's too much ambiguity. Technically, much. if Xavier really wanted to, he could erase their memories of him. I mean, he could. He did it to Rose Byrne. That would be a dick move. Personally, I'm trying to validate just having some of them come back. Uh, I would love to see Cyclops return to mentor X-23, serving that role of Xavier. Of course, this is assuming that there is any survivors, but hey, I'm an optimist. And it would be just great to see James Marsden get something to do. Exactly, and I just want to see a scene where, like, little X-23, like, somehow she found out about, like, Jean and Logan, and she just, and they're having, she's having a fight with Cyclops, it's like, Jean liked Logan better! He's like, you bitch, I'm so close to taking my glasses off. It would serve as her giving a kind of balance because Wolverine was Wolverine was a rage filled guy where Cyclops is always by the book and you know you know by the rules and sticking to them because you know and so it would be it'd be interesting to see her like you know she's got Wolverine in her no doubt but then get a little bit of like Cyclops's mentoring to yeah. give her kind of a balance. It would be interesting to see the character how she would change like that. You don't really walk away from Logan with a good feeling. It's a yeah. grim movie that stomps out almost any sign of hope. It's heartbreaking in the end because after almost 18 years, it's like watching a good friend die. So if you're looking for some fun escapism, then this will probably let you down. But if you're looking for a story that challenges you and handles the material in a way that's unlike any other superhero film, then you should be engaged. Like any good X-Men story, its themes and commentary are relevant. It's dramatic and thought-provoking. There are issues. It's not perfect, but there's more to praise here than to complain about. I definitely do recommend Logan. It's certainly the best of the Wolverine solo movies, but it's also just a good movie in any category. This is the end of an era. Like I said uh, at the beginning of the video, it gives me what I want, but doesn't give me that and more factor, and that's what holds it back for me. As we said in this video, performances are great, you know, the tone is good. Uh, it's a solid film, it's just missing that from it, taking it to that higher peak. Uh, so overall, I'd, I'd say it's a, I'd give it an 8.5 out of 10. I'd say that. I'd say that's where it is for me. I, I'll see it, I will see it again. 
Uh, and one of my friends said, hey man, have you seen Loki yet? I'm like, yeah, but I'll go see it with you again. You know, it was a good movie. Uh, and I'll watch it many times in the years to come. But they did a good job. I mean, especially considering what they adapted it from. The old man Logan uh, comics uh, are like superhero dystopian future. You know, like where this kind of thing is like, like I said, small scale. Considering they adapted it from that, uh, yeah, I think they pulled it off. All right, everybody, well, uh, we hope you enjoyed this video. Please let us know what you're thinking down in the comments. Uh, just to let everybody know, I uh, uh, started uh, my own channel, the P.O. Vincent channel, where I do weekly movie reviews. So you Spin off. <laughs> it's a spin off channel. Uh, where, so if you're interested in movies that are of a non nerdy nature, go check out my channel over there, P.O. Vincent. Click subscribe to that. Uh, but still, there's still review the nerds here. So if you enjoyed this video, click that subscribe button. But until next time, I'm Vincent. And I'm Mike. And this has been Review, Review of the Nerds. Nerds. Catch you next time. Snick, snick.